What's up guys? Welcome to another video. This video we're going to take a look at Charge's new Disc Plus and it is up and coming. Um, I think they're just finishing their Kickstarter campaign on this bad boy so this is kind of an early look at this model and uh, you can definitely go and back it right now and um, support it and I believe it's coming to fruition and it'll be shipping here pretty soon. Uh, at least to the early backers, I don't know what kind of supply chain they're going to have, but um, Charge did provide this to the show to review, so I'm going to bring you uh, an early look at this Disc Plus device, which is very, very cool and has a lot of power in a very small form factor. In fact, this is ultra thin, uh, probably one of the thinnest uh, SSD enclosures I've come across, and actually the power it provides is quite amazing what they've packed into this little footprint of a device. So as you can see here, ultra thin, they say it's about three coins stacked, size of a card holder, um, and yeah, it, it, it is. It's very, very small for what it provides and brings to the table. Now, there is a few accessories that come that you can get with it. Uh, out of the box, this is pretty much what you see except for this, all right? This is a MagSafe or a magnetic uh, attachment so you can get separately. Um, this just sticks onto this so you can use it now as a magnet. If you need to create a MagSafe environment they do provide a couple of MagSafe magnets. All right. Another accessory is this cable. This is one of those um, bendies so it's not really a straight, so this will allow you to put, like hook it up to a camera or a smartphone and have kind of a organized cable system set up, right? So here is the actual box that this comes in. This is probably looking like production material right here. So it is a USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 M.2 NVMe SSD enclosure. Ah, it's a mouthful. So it has two USB-C ports. They label them as USB-C 1 and USB-C 2. And you're like, why you got two ports? Well, because you have a power pass through. So this will allow you to charge and provide storage to your device at the same time. 10 gigabits, right? So that's a lot of throughput for this little device. That's, that's actually fairly impressive, right? And you're like your iPhone, well, It'll do 10 gig, 10 gig, 10 gig, right? So we should have no problems. You can hook it up to a laptop. You can hook it up to a multitude of things. Uh, handheld gaming systems, right? If you want NVMe storage on a handheld gaming system, you can do it. Uh, cameras, like we already mentioned. You can hook it up to a laptop. You can hook it up to a tablet. You can hook it up to, like I said, a smartphone. A lot of options out here. And that is kind of everything that they're pimping in the box. Now... I do want to say uh, the, the thin size here, again, ultra thin, they say it is 0 0.24 inches thick, right? This little magnetic piece here adds a little bit. If you take this off, you're very, very thin. And, you know, if you want to compare it to like an iPhone, it's just as thin, if not a little thinner than an iPhone. So that's a pretty good comparison on the device. So, it supports three different form factors of SSDs, okay? And it does come with a little screwdriver if you're wondering, I just don't have this in the, in the frame. Now, unfortunately, the screwdriver is only good for these uh, screws here, not the actual screw inside that holds the SSD card down, uh, or SSD drive down. So, you do have to have a, a little star head or Phillips, that'll probably work, that, to, to get that SSD screw out. Three different form factors, 2280, 2242, and a 2230. This happens to be a 2280, and this is the actual NV2. I want to shout out Kingston. They provided this storage for the show. They provide the storage for all of our videos that per, uh, have external storage. And uh, shout out to Kingston. Now, I do, this, this, like, you're like, wait, wait a minute. If this is what you've got in here, why is there one in here? Because I'm going to give you a little history. I installed this Fury, this is a Kingston, it's a Renegade uh, SSD, okay? Be careful. The SSD that you're choosing, if it 
needs more than the 15 watts that takes to power this up through a bus port, right? Like your iPhone can't produce more than that. This actual SSD here would not be seen from that iPhone unless I provided power to the other USB-C port on this device. So if you get a higher power requirement on your SSD card that you're going to put in here, know that you will have to provide power, which will do the power pass-through, you just won't charge it as fast, because it's going to require some of that power you're giving it for the pass-through to run the device and be seen and active on your phone or whatever device you need that in. If your device USB-C doesn't provide enough juice, again, you're going to have to power this to get it to work. So, I wound up taking this Fury out and put in this NV2 PCIe 4.0 NVMe from Kingston again and now it's a lower power SSD and I don't need to power this. My iPhone provides enough watts through its USB-C port that I don't have to provide power to this to use it as a storage device. So be very very aware of what you put in this as an SSD card that it does not have a higher power requirement or it won't work unless you provide this device with the power as well. All right, with that said, format wise, right? So you're like, well, what does this all work with? Well, yeah, it works with Windows, it works with Linux, it works with Android, it works with iOS, iPad OS, um, and Mac OS, right? It just depends on what you format it as. Once you get that SSD card in here, I have used EX, EXFAT, and I've also used, uh, is it uh, Apple? disk system, right, ADFS or ADS or something like that, um, with no issues, right? If you do EXFAT, it's going to work if you take it out and put it in a Windows device, a Linux device, a Mac device, that makes it a little universal. If you use the Apple disk format, of course it's only going to be seen in an Apple device. You can't take it over to Windows and it'll see the Apple disk format. No, it won't. So how you format this and how you want to use it across devices counts. So be sure that you're formatting it for your use case that you have. All right. If you just got an Apple ecosystem, the Apple disk format is fine. You know, it'll be seen in everything you plug it into that's Apple. So you're good. You might have a little bit of a file size limitation, but this can only hold a four terabyte maximum capacity SSD. So at the time, four terabytes, don't go over that because it will not support a four or a greater than four terabyte SSD card. All right, it's got a whole aluminum body and it's got thermal pads you know, that you install when you put the SSD card in. And they look like this, okay? Basically, I took this and put it over the SSD card or SSD drive and that's your thermal, thermal paste, right? Or your thermal pad. You also get these little, you get a couple extra screws and then these little sticky, clear stickies, if you don't want to uh, use it, you can use these as like a, a sticky way to put it on, okay? There's different ways. All right, so with that thermal paste and the aluminum body, it's supposed to reduce operating heat. I've used this a little bit. It gets warm. It doesn't get hot. So I think it's a good enough design. And it also it uses the Realtek uh, 9210 chipset. So if you want to Google that, Basically, that uh, keeps it operating pretty safe, right? It, it makes sure that you're not going to overheat, uh, overcharge it. Uh, anything that you can do to short circuit it or anything that's going to damage your storage or damage your devices that you've got. So if you want to look more up to that, the Realtek RTL 9210 chipset. Uh, the MagSafe adapter. Now, remember, we put this on. So let's go ahead and get out our, our iPhone here. And so what we're going to do is going to put... USB-C 2 at the top, okay? So that is your power device right here. Power it right here. This is what I'm going to use to plug into the phone. Now, what I haven't mentioned yet, you probably like saw this, is this has an onboard C to C data and power cable. So we can actually take that cord out. You can see it's just a push through and then plug it in Let's get the iPhone launched up here, so you'll actually see if I get the disk app running. Disk. Disk. Wow. 
Well, not the disk I.O. We want files. Boom. All right. So right now, you do not see it. I named this like a uh, charge device or charge disk plus or something like that. So we're going to plug it in. And hopefully, charge disk shows up. So I can click on it. It says it's empty. All right. Let's do a quick little disk I.O. test. Okay. Location is the phone. We want to change the location to no recents. Recents. Browse. Browse. Charge disk. Okay. It's empty. So we've got that. We'll open it. And our location is now char changed to charge disk, right? We're going to do a Let's just do a one gig at a two, eh, yeah, let's do a two meg chunk. Let's start this demo. Look at that speed. That's phenomenal. See, it even says stellar, right? So, we were getting 743 megabytes write and 546 megabytes read. That's pretty darn good. If you want to do raw uh, footage with this bad boy, you can. Right, you can record your in your iPhone's raw uh, video format straight to this device. Now, when I say it's got power pass through, here's what I'm talking about. We can take this cable and we can plug it in maybe to here. Okay, now we got to get a device to the charge. So I'm just going to bring over this little Momax power bank here. And we're doing power pass through, baby, right there. So this is now a pretty good combination that I'm able to write storage to this guy and charge my iPhone from this device. Okay. Now, is this the ultimate charger setup for going out and doing and video and stuff like that? No, probably not. But just as a demonstration, showing you that this actually does power pass through, and this cable is one that they provided. So if you want to use this cable, by the way, versus this cable, you can, right? So we're just gonna undo this. And I'll just plug it in down here. I'll fix it back onto here. And is this a little neater? Maybe. Let's go back on to files. and charge disk is there. So you can use the built-in cable that comes with it, which is this little guy, or you can use this cable here and as a separate entity and use it like that. It sticks out a little bit, it's your preference. But pretty cool little setup there. Now, I do want to point out, this also comes with this little carry case, which I think is actually pretty nice. Definitely a faux leathery look. And what we can do here is once we have detached, even with this uh, magnetic backer on the back, it does fit in here. Because I was a little worried. It's like, hmm. But yes, fits in there snug. So you guys have a nice little carry case to put this in your uh, collect all, right? So, uh, one other piece of information again, I want to do that pass through charging. Believe it or not, it'll pass through 85 watts to the device you're, you're, you're working on. As long as the bus is powering the drive, it's gonna pass up to 85 watts max. That's, that's pretty phenomenal for this little size of a device. 85 watts passed onto your iPhone. Again though, if you have a higher power need for an SSD in here, some of that 85 watts is gonna to go to this guy just to power it. So there is that. So don't think, oh, I'm going to get 85 watts. No, it's up to. That's max. All right. Then finally, and lastly, I've already mentioned, check the show notes for the link for this guy where you can go out and you can back it and order it and get on the list to get you this pretty kick butt little disc plus device. I mean, how much more do you want in a cool, helpful device like that? 
right? Look at that. That's pretty fabulous. So thin, so powerful. Technology these days is really, really good. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the show, and as always, guys, thank you for watching. Click that notification bell, too, to be notified after you subscribe, so you'll get notifications when we post new content, which we've got a ton coming, especially with the iPhone 16. A lot of good stuff. I actually have a Pro Max coming this week. So, watch for a lot of new video content on the iPhone 16 as well. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.